I think I love the show. Yes. As I always suspected. I put more passion into that show than perhaps any other series I've ever made. For the first pilot, I was the assistant director, having previously turned Gene Roddenberry's offer down to be the associate producer on that first pilot. But I felt I wasn't ready with, in the area of post-production. Uh, so I acted as first assistant director on the first pilot. When the second pilot came along, Gene insisted that I become the associate producer at that time on that second pilot. Of course, I was still the first assistant in addition. When the show sold, Gene called and let me know that it was a series and that he would like to have me with him to do the show. And I was overjoyed because I was perhaps three months away from quitting the business. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be able to stand this. Actually, my duties were that of a producer. There was no one else in the beginning other than Gene Roddenberry and myself and the, the uh, other associate producer, John D.F. Black, who handled story. So that was it. There were no thousands of producers running around. Uh, there was no enormous staff. It was just the few of us. We were putting in at the studio 14 to 16 hours a day. How long do you plan on keeping me here? Providing Midros doesn't kill me, of course. And then we take our work home with us. I said dig! And crash at about 11, 12 o'clock at night and get up at four in the morning. And it was always getting up with a sense of anticipation and sometimes with a sense of dread. Return to the digging, Captain. I honestly couldn't tell how we were gonna do what we were gonna do that day until we got there. So there were four years there alone uh, of high pressure days, uh, high pressure weekends, uh, great agony, or at least it seemed so at the time. Uh, time has a, a way of smoothing things out. TV Guide did a, uh, did a survey, many, many thousands of people voted, and my script was, vo well, not my script, the way it was shown, that, that segment was called not only the number one best all-time episode of Star Trek, but in their list of the 100 greatest moments in television, that was one of them. In fact, to show you how stupid TV Guide is, it beat out the assassination of, Jack, of uh, Lee Harvey Oswald by Jack Ruby. It shows you where TV Guide's head is. Joan Collins, like a vampire bat, has been feeding off this part all of her life. She talks about it, she goes on these talk shows and she tells people, get this, she tells people, I was Hitler's girlfriend. No, you poor pathetic bimbet, you. You were not Hitler's girlfriend. You were Amy Semple McPherson. You were a salvation sister. You were a mission worker. You were a good and decent person whose philosophy becomes very popular and keeps America out of the war for a brief time and it allows time to be changed and Hitler wins. Her brain, from which, you know, if you looked inside there, it is a giant arid plain across which winds play endlessly. You could look inside one of her ears and you would see a candle on the other side. She cannot get it straight. And people have come up to her and told her, Miss Collins, you were not Hitler's girlfriend. You were not a Nazi plant. Well, it's in all of her books. It's in her biography. And I saw her on Letterman the other night. She was doing that number. Oh, no, it wasn't. Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien, she was doing the same number again. And I wished, if, if I had the ability, if I had one wish, it would be that I could transmogrify myself, jump into the television set, and rip out her throat. 